we want to evaluate the given definite integral. This is going to require u substitution because we have the quantity 3x minus 4 raised to the third power, not just x raised to the third power, which means we begin by letting u equal 3x minus 4. Next, we determine differential u or du, where du is equal to the derivative of 3x minus 4 times dx, which gives us 3 dx. Now looking back at the integral, we can substitute u for the quantity 3x minus 4, which gives us u to the third here. And then notice we're left with 2 dx, and we have du equals 3 dx. So we can either multiply both sides by 2 thirds, so the right side is exactly 2 dx, or we can just solve for dx by dividing both sides by 3. Let's go ahead and just solve for dx by dividing both sides by 3. Simplifying, we have 1 third du equals dx. Now we can substitute 1 third du for dx and simply factor out the two. You need to be careful here though, the limits of integration from one to two are x values, not u values. So right now we'll leave off the limits of integration, factor out the two, dx is equal to 1 third du, we will factor out the 1 third, and we have du, and because u is equal to 3x minus 4, the integrand function is u to the third. At this point we need to make a choice. We can find the antiderivative with respect to x, and then use the limits of integration from one to two, or if you want to leave this in terms of u, we will need to determine the limits of integration for u. Notice how the antiderivative is going to be two thirds times u to the fourth divided by four plus c, and we leave off the plus c to evaluate definite integrals, which means in terms of x, which I'll write below, the antiderivative would be two thirds times Again, u to the fourth is going to be the quantity 3x minus four to the fourth divided by four. And since we have the antiderivative with respect to x, we would use the original limits of integration from one to two. But let's also show how we would find the new limits of integration if we want to leave the integral in terms of u. Notice when x is equal to one, u is equal to three times one minus four, which is negative one. Negative one is the lower limit of integration if the integral is in terms of u. And when x is equal to two, u is equal to three times two minus four, which is two. So if we leave the integral in terms of u, we would use the limits of integration from negative one to two. And if we find the antiderivative with respect to x, we use the limits of integration from one to two. I'm gonna go ahead and show both methods just to verify we get the same result. Let's continue with the integral written in terms of u. The antiderivative is two thirds times u to the fourth divided by four. Simplifying here, there's one, two, and two, and two twos and four, which gives us one sixth times u to the fourth. Let's factor out the one sixth. And now we need to determine one sixth times the difference of big F of two and big F of negative one which is equal to one-sixth times the quantity, big F of two is two to the fourth, minus big F of negative one is negative one to the fourth. Simplifying, we have one-sixth times the difference of 16 and one, which is equal to 15 sixth, which simplifies to five halves. Let's also show we get the same result if we use the antiderivative with respect to x and then use the original limits of integration from one to two. So again, down below, we can simplify like before. There's one, two, and two, and two twos and four. Let's go ahead and factor out the one sixth. And now we need to determine one sixth times difference of big F of two and big F of one. Big F of two is equal to three times two minus four raised to the fourth minus big F of one is equal to three times one minus four to the fourth. Simplifying, we have one six times the difference of three times two is six minus four is two giving us two to the fourth, which of course is the same result as above. And then minus three times one minus four is negative one giving us the fourth power of negative one. 
giving us the same result of 1 sixth times the difference of 16 and 1, which is equal to 15 sixths or 5 halves. And notice the result, of course, is the same. So I do like showing both methods occasionally because you will see both methods in practice. Before we go, let's look at the graph of the integrand function over the closed interval from 1 to 2. If we shade the area bounded by the function on the x-axis over the closed interval from 1 to 2, notice how some of the area is below the x-axis, this would be negative, and some of the area is above the x-axis, this would be positive. And since the result of the definite integral is positive, we know there is more area above the x-axis than there is below. I hope you found this helpful.